Yo, it's Bogue. Welcome back to the Beyond the Wormhole series and Kerbal Space Program. Today we're going to be sending this exoplanet colony ship bound for the Seleuco eyeball planet in the Cacao Below planet pack. We're going to be sending this colony ship into orbit. And we're going to have to build it in orbit actually because it's too large to launch all on its own. Um, but the main part about this is it's got these canisters on the back that we're going to be th uh, flying down to the surface using this Babylon class cargo SSTO from my South Pole episode. So you can see kind of like some of the modules that are stuffed inside these little canisters. But this exoplanet colony ship is the thing that's going to get them there. And we're going to have to build it in orbit with multiple different launches. So this is the first kind of launch system for the uh, fuel block of the colony ship. Um, pretty convoluted setup here this is like huge super unrealistic rocket but you got to do what you got to do more boosters and all that so let's get we have lift off off the pad this guy's got like a ton of stages and it's kind of risky like it took me so many tries to get this thing to not blow up um, especially since a lot of the rocket kind of sits inside of the enclosure of some of these engines there it's like when I detach like sometimes it would like explode but um, Oh, looks like there was something, but looks like no damage, so we're good. Looks like we're just kicking that apoapsis out of the atmosphere. Um, just our last kind of radial stage separation there. And looks like we're at around the right height, and we're just going to start that circularizing process. We detached our last um, insertion burn stage. We just pop off the nose cone there, and let me just circularize this orbit a little bit better real quick. But yeah, this is the, like, the fuel slash engine block of the colony ship. And you have, like, kind of like this truss structure in the back um, that kind of is like a hollow space in the vehicle. Um, that's where the cargo will sit. And so this is the cargo um, launcher that I've kind of thrown together real quick. I'm launching all three of the cargo pods all in one piece. Um, but yeah, just got off the launch pad there. This guy's a lot easier to fly. But yeah, so what we're going to be doing with these cargo pods is we're going to have to line up like super perfectly and then fit in between those engine blocks and dock with um, the cargo engine, not the cargo, the fuel engine block of the colony ship. And so that's kind of going to be interesting. But it looks like we've got our apoapsis out of the atmosphere and setting up that circularization maneuver. I'm just drifting up to our the peak of our orbit here. All right, we're gonna execute that burn real quick and we should be in orbit. And now we have to set up our rendezvous with the main engine block of the colony ship. So I'll set that as my target and I will set up an inclination matching maneuver at one of my ascending or descending nodes. Go ahead and warp towards that and perform that little burn for only about half hundred meters per second of delta V, so not bad at all. And then now our goal is to get some of those close encounter nodes to like be right on top of each other and so you can do this by kind of waiting till your kind of differences in your orbit like pass you really close so that's kind of what i was seeing but it looks like it's going to take like 10 days you can save fuel doing it this way um looks like i'm going to do it anyways you can like use your fuel to like force a close flyby or you can like wait if you're in a an orbit where like over time you'll just slowly drift closer if that makes sense it's a little bit more tricky to understand docking took me like years to figure out in this game and it's like once you figure that out like the whole world of ksp like opens to you yeah it's crazy anyways we have our fairly close separation there it looks like the the main engine block of the colony ship is about two kilometers out so all we have to do now is just eliminate our relative speed and then point towards it and drift towards it um and then kill our velocity again once we are like super close and then we can start the docking procedure. All right, we're just under a kilometer out. Um, you can see that distance readout there. We're gonna point retrograde target, kill off our relative velocity again till that 
now vol marker hits zero or close close by and then we're going to point towards it again this is going to be a really kind of like accuracy intensive docking process because i have to line these guys up perfectly these um fairing covers don't actually like have like collision physics so like if i accidentally bump into my fairings it'll actually like collide through the fairing and it might damage my cargo underneath and i don't want that of course so we have a fair amount of rcs blocks on this guy so we should be able to control it pretty well but all the rcs thrusters are at the front and not aligned with its center of mass so i'm a little bit worried about that but let's go ahead and make sure all of our docking ports are aligned. You can like switch to the other craft and select the other docking port as your target. And then make them just point towards each other. Now I have to drift slowly through this engine block here. You can see like the truss or the struts that I've kind of formed is like a cage around where this cargo is going to sit. Um, but I'm trying to do this as carefully as possible, of course. Looks like we bumped into it. We gotta get that alignment perfect though in order for it to dock make sure not to hit the struts okay looks like we docked all right so that's phase two complete um, let's go ahead and deploy some of those solar panels we got two of them out already anyways I'm just checking the tires of some of these uh, cargo modules sometimes they can break when they get bumped around but yeah I think now let's get on with the third launch. Um, this is the habitation ring module. So these habitation rings are actually from Nertea's stock alike station um, ex parts expansion redux or something like that. Anyways, they're really nice stock alike. Um, I use them to just save on performance instead of doing that whole like radial hack thing that sometimes makes the Kraken go crazy um, and like glitches out your craft or whatever. I mean, not often, but you know just to save on part count. Um, yeah, it's got these really nice um, habitation rings that self-account for their own torque, which is also a really nice feature. And they have really cool, like, cohesive interiors, which is something that, um, kind of like that, that, like, times 32, like, radial hack for, like, making your own rings with, like, the MK2 or whatever, like, cargo crew thing part you know what i'm talking about like but these ones have a lot more cohesive interiors which is pretty cool so looks like i'm in orbit i just set the colony ship as my target we're gonna have to repeat all of those docking procedures um so looks like right now we're doing that inclination alignment burn for about 10 meters per second of delta v looks like we're really matched up this time so that's nice and then now I got to get those close encounter uh, nodes to swing right on top of each other. Looks like we're going to wait a few orbits till they're relatively close by and then we can do some adjustments. I'm looking at the purple ones right now. Looks like we got a really close separation there. So I'll just warp ahead till that um, maneuver is time to execute. And that's a really small maneuver as well. So this is turning out to be a pretty efficient um, docking maneuver uh, fuel wise, but we have had to wait. Um, several hours to orbit into the right position and it actually looks like we're getting an eclipse on Kerbin right now from the Moon um, and the Sun or Kerbal yeah pretty cool I, you don't see that that often it's like one more orbit and then we'll be coming up on our flyby oh yes there it is it's about three kilometers out two kilometers we're gonna have to repeat the docking procedure so that's eliminate your relative velocity point towards the target burn towards it then rinse and repeat until you're basically right on top of it. So that's what I'm doing right now. All right, let's warp. Let's warp ahead till it's the day side so we can see a little bit better what we're doing. Um, okay, I gotta get this thing lined up too. So this kind of is the ring habitation part of the ship. It's also got like this truss structure in the front where I'm gonna be docking like a small like shuttle SSTO. It's actually not small, it's like more like medium sized. But yeah, that's gonna be like 
our advanced party down to the surface of Seleuco, which is the habitable eyeball planet in the Sun Orc system that orbits the black hole Kakaobolo from the Kakaobolo planet pack. Yeah, I actually did my first episode in this series on a mission to Seleuco. Um, pretty interesting, it's tidally locked, so the same side of the planet faces the star at all times. So, like, the, the front of the planet's like all scorched from being in sunlight like all the time. But there's kind of like this twilight zone on the ring around the edges of the planet where there's some um, liquid oceans and it seems like like a pretty pleasant environment. So that, yeah, that's why we're checking out Seleuco here with this colony ship. That'll be in the next episode because it's taken me so long to build this thing in orbit. But yeah, make sure to stay tuned for that, everybody. Um, looks like I'm just about lined up to begin this docking procedure for the habitation ring module. We're about 60 meters out. And all I'm trying to do here is use my RCS blocks to make sure that my prograde vector is aligned with the docking port that I've set as my target. And just making small adjustments there. Looks like this one's going to be easy though. Cool. We're all docked with the third launch. Um, looks like I never deployed these solar panels. Let me do that real quick. Cool, shaving up really well so far. Now we got just one last launch, but actually let me inflate these. Oh, looks like we need an engineer on board. That's okay, we'll send one up with the uh, shuttle here, which I've kind of put on the, the end of a big rocket. Uh, wanna, wanna keep it fully fueled, so I'm just gonna be sending it on the back of this rocket here. We have lift off, off the pad. Yeah, so it looks like those um, inflatable habitation rings need an engineer present to inflate them and to like, you know, like deploy them essentially. So I have to send one of them, uh, an engineer on this shuttle here, which actually is carrying my main crew for the spacecraft. This um, this like small shuttle SSTO has, I think a capacity, like a max capacity of nine Kerbals, which is pretty cool. Looks like we just detached and now we have our Orbital insertion stage, firing on all cylinders. I guess rocket engines don't have cylinders, but you know, all chambers, I guess. We have our, we have our apoapsis out of the limit of Kerbin's atmosphere, so we're just gonna be drifting up to our apoapsis, and then we will do that final circularization burn to make sure that this thing stays in orbit. I'm orbiting towards that now. Just burn prograde till we get that periapsis above the orbit. Uh, atmospheric height I mean and let's now let's set the colony ship as my target and then we will do you know this is like a lot you could call this episode um, just like orbital shenanigans right like I'm doing these processes like over and over like I, right now I just did my inclination match maneuver now I'm getting those close encounter flybys here you can do it pretty quick once you get the hang of it it's a really good thing to practice in KSP like I said before like once you get the like a real hang of like like orbital rendezvous and docking like the whole like the realm of possibilities like opens up to you so yeah that's pretty cool um looks like i kind of missed my window though so i'm gonna have to set up another um kind of fly by here on the other side Okay, it looks like we got another one, so that's good. We'll just warp ahead. A few more orbits till that's coming up. Okay, it looks like we got those close encounter nodes really close, so it's just, uh, just over a kilometer of separation. And there it is. We'll just point retrograde to target, burn till our relative velocity is zero on the nav ball there. Point towards it, rinse and repeat, standing docking procedure and all that. 
Now we're just kind of drifting towards it. When you like drop in and out of physics time warp versus like the the high speed time warp, sometimes like your exact position in your orbit like jumps around. Um, that's why it's like glitching around like that. But let's set my uh, let's try to align these docking ports to make this as easy as possible. Um, so my docking port on this little SSTO is on the underside of, or I guess you could say like the belly of the space plane. So. Uh, I'm going to be trying to get these to line up, but it proved to be rather fiddlesome. Um, let me just try to do that hack where I can make them line up by setting them, like, respectively as each other's target. Let's just do, like, that belly roll there so we can get them lined up just like that. And we'll see if my RCS ports are kind of, like, aligned on the center of mass of this thing so that we can get some like accurate translation effects for this spacecraft here. I'll just let you guys watch me struggle with this real quick. <laughs> Okay, looks like we got it docked pretty good. And that's actually gonna be it for today. We've got the spacecraft completed. So this is our Saluco exoplanet colony ship. Um, pretty cool. I've just got those rings inflated there finally. That's what it looks like when they're rotating. I really love the rings from the station parts expansion, the soccer like station parts expansion redux. Such a mouthful. So yeah, this ship turned out really cool. Um, I love the rings there, um, and the interiors are really cool. Let me show you what it looks like on the inside of one of these habitation rings here. You can see Kerbin spinning around there. But yeah, in the next few episodes, I'll be sending it to Saluko, and uh, so I think there's going to be one more episode where we actually fly to Saluko, and then a third episode where we finally like deploy... Um, those cargo modules full of the habitation units onto the surface. Let me show you um, Saluko actually. So this is in the Cacaobolo system from the Cacaobolo Planet Pack mod and this is Saluko. Like I was saying it's that tidally locked um, planet to the stars. So, the, so like the front side of the planet is like super scorched but you have like this ring of like habitability and like uh, green um, land also and this ring like this ringed ocean and that's because like the temperatures get progressively cooler like as you like go back um away from like the front center of the front side of the planet so yeah it's kind of an interesting little phenomenon they call those eyeball planets which is pretty cool um but yeah make sure to tune in for the next episode where i actually fly there um but yeah thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one peace out